Good early, early Sunday morning, uh, everyone. Brian Newbert here from GoldenBlack.com, live in Welsh Ryan Arena uh, here in Evanston, Illinois, outside of Chicago, following Purdue's 61-58 to win at Northwestern. I was going to say happy Super Bowl Sunday, everyone, but I don't know if I'm allowed to say Super Bowl. Um, if we're not, oh well. Somebody come track me down and stop me for next year. Uh, anyway, Purdue beats Northwestern 61-58 to get its first Big Ten road win, as you're well aware. Um, say it with me now, everybody, and then say it ten times fast. And If you've been drinking tonight on this Saturday night, you're pretty much screwed on this. Sasha Stefanovic saves the season. Sasha Stefanovic saves the season. Sasha Stefanovic saves the season. Um, how's it going? Uh, that's probably the story. Um, you know, Purdue had to have this game. Uh, you know, Purdue's NCAA tournament hopes are obviously wobbly uh, at this point, losing to the worst team in the Big Ten, the last place team in the Big Ten, would not have been a step in the right direction. Uh, obviously, this would have dropped Purdue to 500. This would have been Purdue's second loss to one of the two worst teams in the Big Ten. And it would have made Purdue a 500 team. It would have, it would have been, it's the last landmine left on the schedule. And if Purdue stepped on it, you know, its resume is flimsy enough, flimsy is not a good word, uh, flawed enough to where Purdue clearly is, you know, probably team number 70 something uh, for this 68 team field. Uh, this could not be a game Purdue lost. You know, th there are must win games and there are can't lose games. What's the difference, really? Um, reminds me of the scene in the, in, in the Departed where uh, Jack Nicholson's opening monologue where he's talking about kids in his neighborhood who grow up to be cops or criminals. And he says, all I'm saying is, when you're facing a loaded gun, what's the difference? I don't know why I brought that up. It just came to mind. Uh, but it's a great line. And in this case, the difference between must win and can't lose is nothing. And I don't even know why I'm talking about this at this point. You all know Purdue had to win this game. Purdue had to win this game. And to be honest with you, the only reason it won this game was because for the final three minutes of this game, it was better than a team that it normally is better than. Um, nothing on this box score says, hey, here's why Purdue won. Nothing on this box score necessarily says, here's why Purdue almost lost. The reality of it was Purdue was just better in the final three minutes of this game. And it made the shots that it hasn't been making in key situations on the road all season long. Something that's very important to point out here, Purdue did not just win at Duke. Okay, Northwestern is obviously a very flawed team. They have won six games all year long. They're in last place in the Big Ten. Purdue simply winning this game doesn't transform Purdue's season. This was not the equivalent of last year's Wisconsin game where they got that road win. It flipped the season for them, really got them going in the right direction. This was Purdue winning a game it was supposed to win all along and damn near not doing so. Um, that being said, you obviously have to give Purdue a ton of credit for finishing the game on an 11-0 run, making the play that might have saved the Tennessee Boy tournament hopes here, a perfectly executed offensive play there, when it mattered the most. Um, again, this has not been a Purdue team that in situations like this has responded terribly well or terribly consistently away from Mackey Arena. The fact that they made this play and they played that way for the final 249 or whatever it was of this game really speaks volumes. But it also, um, it also changes very little because for 37 minutes, you know, Purdue was the Purdue that everybody's come to know and you know, probably not always love, and that's the team that, that's horribly flawed away from Mackey Arena that really, really struggles offensively, that struggles to pass the ball to one another. This was – Purdue won this game, but this was one of Purdue's worst passing games of the season to me. Uh, Purdue's inattention defensively uh, throughout a lot of this game was a little, bit of a, a little bit of a red flag. Purdue not getting out the guys who are shooting 45%. From three-point range in Big Ten play, Purdue getting beat to offensive rebounds by the worst offensive rebounding team in the league. The point here is that Purdue overcame a lot to win this game, deserves a hell of a lot of credit for doing so. But the 37 minutes that came before the final three minutes at the side of this game really, you know, shouldn't be glanced over because that's much more of this game than the final three minutes and also much closer to the reality um, of Purdue's season thus far away from Mac Arena. Uh, I guess what this game means in the long run is yet to be determined. Where they go from here will probably tell you 
whether this can be some sort of turning point or whatever, but the reality in the moment is Purdue simply stole a game from a team that, you know, probably deserved to win this game. Um, you know, Purdue scores less the last 11 points. Northwestern got good shots late, just missed them. Um, that's all it came down to. One team was better in the final three minutes after that team had found a way to hang around to its credit. Um, but it also shouldn't have been down. You know, you, you would like to think Purdue was going to win this game relatively easily. That's not always life on the road in the Big Ten, no matter how much the team you're playing is struggling. But that was the 9-0 boo-boo we run was, you know, something that in past games for Purdue would have sunk it and almost did in this game. Again, to its credit, the final three minutes were, were flawless for Purdue. Uh, the 37 prior, you know, shouldn't be overlooked, though, because of those final three minutes. Um, the final play was uh, really, really a great play on Eric Hunter's part. I asked a stupid question uh, in the press conference. I will admit it. You all see the videos. I asked about, you know, the ball being put in Isaiah Thompson's hands to basically make the decision that was going to win this game. I don't have access to replay um, live. Things happen very quickly. I have a lot going on. I'm trying to have something to put on our site as soon as the game ends. I'm trying to tweet. I'm trying to do this and that. And sometimes things happen very quickly, and you don't necessarily process everything that happened right away. It's not until you get to come back from the press conference see the replay where you really even know what you were just asking questions about. And I was asking questions about Purdue putting the ball in Isaiah Thompson's hands to make the decision that was going to win this game. And that wasn't reality at all. Isaiah Thompson had the ball in his hands to start. He, he held the ball until they got to 10 seconds. Purdue went into its offense. He passed off. The guy who had to make the decision, and really the play, was Eric Hunter. Purdue has not been a great pick-and-roll team uh, this year. The play they ran basically ran him into a pick-and-roll with Travion Williams. Uh, but he took the dribble handoff from Sasha Stefanovic, basically just basic ball screen action where the, the big man dives to the rim into a post-up, the guard comes off the screen, the other guy comes off as what they call the, the indirect, that was Stefanovic on this play. Hunter made the perfect play because they took the shot away from him. Um, the pass into Williams would have been heavily contested uh, through the two people who converged on Hunter, and the absolute right play to make was to kick the ball back to Stefanovic. It turns out that he was wide open, um, and it's probably not the, the correct definition of irony uh, for it to be the guy who has struggled so much to shoot on the road, as has been well documented, who makes the biggest shot Purdue's made on the road all season long, really to, again, Sasha Stefanovic saves the season. Do it. Um, but really, really a good decision, a good play, you know, by Eric Hunter, who um, really saved Purdue's bacon in this game, because it's easily forgotten about, too, that, um, you know, he scored – four in a row at 214 and 135, that was a big part of the 11-0 run. So he scored four of those points. He assisted on the final three, the three that were the three biggest of the game, and uh, really a nice response by him uh, in this game to, you know, again, things aren't always, when you get taken out of a starting lineup, it's not always a demotion per se. It's the coach looking for answers sometimes, looking for something different, trying to get the best out of you. And Eric Hunter himself said that, you know, the coaches have wanted him to be more aggressive. Um, and if that move led to his aggressiveness late in the game and the guards overall aggressiveness in this game, that really mattered because I thought one of the really important parts of Purdue actually having a chance to win this game, let alone winning it was its guards pushing the ball up the floor quickly. This team struggles to score in the half court for whatever reason. Um, there's a lot of reasons, but, for whatever the main reason was tonight, I don't know. But there were numerous plays where Isaiah Thompson or Jihad Proctor or Eric Hunter pushed the ball up the floor quickly, got baskets in transition. And this is not exactly a bunch of thoroughbreds this year from a, from a transition perspective. This is not late 90s or, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, early 90s UNLV here where they're kind of running circles around everybody. This is not a big-time transition team. But Purdue is able to, as Matt Painter always says, steal baskets before the opposing defense is established in the half court, and things become much more difficult. I think that was a huge part of this game. Another reflection of Eric Hunter's aggressiveness, and if Matt Painter pulling him from the starting five to put him into a role coming off the bench brought a little more aggressiveness out of him, hey, Purdue just won a game because of it. Because 
Eric Hunter was the player of the game for Purdue in this game. And obviously, Sasha Stefanovic makes the huge shot, but Eric, Hun Eric Hunter made the huge, huge decision on top of the 13 points, the 5 of 10 shooting, all else that kind of, kind, of, kind of went into this. But again, you look at this box score, and you sit here, and you're like, nothing really says Purdue won this game. Nothing really says Northwestern almost won this game. The simple reality of this game was it was a close game between two very flawed teams. One was significantly better than the other one over a three-minute span. And, uh, again, just to recap this rambling uh, diatribe, late, late, late Saturday, early, early Sunday morning, um, Purdue was great in the final three minutes. In winning time, so to speak, crunch time, whatever you want to call it, Purdue was great, and Purdue deserves a lot of credit for that. But those final three minutes shouldn't distract from the, everything that happened the first 37 where Purdue probably should have lost to the worst team in the Big Ten with its NCAA tournament resume hanging in the balance. So uh, that's kind of the story of this game as I see it. Um, that's the news, and I am out of here. Wait, no, that was uh, Dennis Miller. Um, I'm Kevin Nealon, and that's news to me. No, I'm, I'm sorry. That was another weekend update. I can't get SNL out of my mind here. Um, thank you for watching. Thank you for reading. Thank you for listening. And thank you for processing our materials, however you process our materials. And once again, from West Ryan Arena here in Evanston, Illinois, Northwestern University, also you might know it as, uh, following Purdue 61 to 58, harrowing, we will call it a harrowing Purdue win. Um, that means death defying or scary or um, nerve wracking. Um, from Purdue's harrowing 61 to 58. Uh, win over Northwestern here at Welsh Ryan Arena. This is Brian Newber from GoldenBlack.com. I hope everyone has a great Sunday. I hope you enjoy Super, the Super Bowl. Again, if I'm allowed to say that, if not, you know where to find me, people. Thanks, everyone.